In this video, I test out the 3D scanner by Revopoint called the Morocco. Maybe it's Morocco? I think it's Morocco. Anyway, this thing is totally amazing, very easy to use, uh, affordable, and so if you're in the market for something like this, you definitely want to pay attention. Let's open the box. Okay, here's what comes in the box. Looks like a, a bag. Um, very nice bag. It's a uh, magnetic closure, that's cool. Let's see what's in it. Oh, this is not the scanner. Looks like the um, battery powered um, little turntable that you can turn small things on. Um, power source. Not sure what that is. And some other assorted plugs. Adapters and plugs. And a little stand to go with it too. So your camera can sit still. Uh, looks like all the fun stuff is on this side. This is... Uh, it's hard to do one-handed. Not sure what this part is. Looks like some sort of a another uh, stand to uh, scan from. I have to read the instructions and see. I'm actually complete newborn when it comes to this computery stuff. You know, you guys, if you've watched this channel for a long time, you know I like to hit things with hammers and make things in real life. I'm not much of a 3D scan. Um, 3D print kind of person, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna become one because we're gonna need to. Uh, these look like um, like little areas to scan uh, your objects. Gonna have to definitely read through this. I was also told to update the software as soon as I get it, so I'm gonna be doing that. I'll do that off camera, obviously. Little. Um, stickers and it looks like a really big looks like far mode this looks like a really big uh, you know placemat to scan on here's your scanner this is uh looks like Gaius Julius Kaiser pretty good representation of him this is like a little um I guess like a, a practice scan to scan it and make sure that it's uh functioning properly and you know how to use the machine so um, another power source I think and a charging charging cable and this is what we're all here to see now this is actually what they recommended um, for all of the um, products that they have this is the one that they recommended because this one actually doesn't require a um, a standalone camera, I'm sorry, standalone uh, computer to be plugged into. So does, you don't have to have it plugged into your desktop or plugged into your uh, laptop and have somebody follow you around. I mean, I don't have anybody to follow me around. I don't have any friends. Here, here's a picture of me with all of my friends on the 4th of July. Um, anyway, this is uh, actually smaller than I expected it to be too. It's actually a really nice size. So um, we're going to turn this thing on and figure out how it works. And we are going to be scanning that beautiful car I designed. So here I've got the little bust on the little turntable and I'm just basically turning it on and turning the scanner on and letting them go. In this particular scan, I actually just have the, the tripod set up and I'm just letting it spin and just recording. And as you can see, this is a pretty nice scan for being my very first ever and, um, you know, it's reasonable, but there's a little bit of a problem. There's a hole under his chin because the scanner could not reach it. So that's a problem. Um, and if you, if you just tap this edit, you can see that uh, he's got a couple of holes here. So we don't want that in our in our prints. So instead of doing it that way, 
So instead of just having the scanner set up on the tripod and being stationary, I decided to try to move the scanner up and down very slowly and in, controlled, in a controlled manner. And this allowed it to catch all of the angles and it spun, I don't know, maybe four times around and uh, I was able to catch all of the details and there's no more holes. So to get an object like that, that's how it's going to have to be done. Now this one, if you look at the top there, see where it says too near and those red bars, you don't want that. I was doing this wrong when I started. I still got a decent scan out of it, but it was too close and it wasn't scanning properly. So the, the resulting uh, scan was a little bit uh, muddy, let's just say. And this is the resulting scan. And as you can see, there's a lot of little flaws in it. It, it just didn't catch all of the, all the details the way it should have. So make sure that those bars are all green. Another thing you gotta take into consideration is the fact that this scanner, uh, I'm not gonna say it can't, but it's not very good at picking up very shiny things or very dark things. This little Rocketeer art piece that I made, um, this is very shiny and I, I knew that this wouldn't work. I just wanted to show you what would happen here. As you can see, it's not catching a lot of that reflective stuff. If you want to have uh, a scan something that is reflective or very dark, you need to use a scanning spray, which is just basically like a, like a, I guess like a baby powder kind of uh, spray that's sprayed on stuff and you can, it just dissolves over time. I did scan the back of it though, and even though it's kind of dark in there and there's some shiny stuff, it did get some pretty good detail, which was pretty, pretty impressive. Very nice. This is my first scan of the car, and this was just done in near mode. Uh, actually, this might be far mode, but um, I, I, it didn't have a point of reference. Uh, like a lot of the panels are very flat, as you can see, like there's some weird anomalies that occur when the scanner will kind of get lost in, in whatever the object is because it, it recognizes flat areas as the same areas as other flat areas. So this is what I ended up doing. I used the far mode and I put the, uh, the far mode mat down and a bunch of little uh, reflective stickers. As you can see, I put a couple here, not too many, just enough. You only need five in, in the shot at any given time. and just slowly walk along. Now the scanner is very smart, so if you need to stop, just hit pause, and then when you resume, you can pick up where you left off and it just keeps going. Okay, here I've got the point cloud model all done. As you can see, it still needs some touching up. We have some markers in the background to get rid of, but uh, overall, this is a pretty good model. Um, tiny little defects here and there, but you know, I'm a beginner, guys, come on. Uh, let me save the model. And the first thing we'll do is go to the point cloud fusion and we'll set it to the lowest possible settings, which will give us the best results. And here we go. This is the fused model. We're going to go back into fusion and go into isolation. And it will detect all of the things that are not supposed to be the model. Let's just go ahead and Epstein these dots and just yank all that stuff out. And now it's pretty clean. We have a couple little areas to clean up, but we will deal with that a little later. Change, uh, I'm just experimenting right here, trying to see if I can find any more little anomalies and uh, changing the isolation rate to see if any more pop up and none do. I have a little bit of a problem at the bottom here, but um, actually on all the edges is a little bit ragged, but I, I can clean that up in uh, Blender or Fusion 360. I'm not too worried about it. This is my second go around. I'm sorry, third time trying to detect any um, anomalies. And again, it didn't find anything new. So we will live with that and keep on going.
Now we're going to go to the mesh quality. We're going to make this as high as possible for the best possible outcome for the final result. And there we go. We've got a nice, very clean model. I have a couple of little spots that I'm going to have to clean up. Um, but look, this thing even got like, the texture of the, the primer paint. So that is pretty impressive for the scanner, I would say. So final thoughts on the Rubberpoint Morocco scanner. Uh, this thing is amazing. I am very impressed with it. I admittedly am still very much a newborn when it comes to this sort of stuff, so I'm still learning and there's a lot of little improvements I'm sure that my scans could have had, um, but for my first few scans, I think this is very impressive. It's going to do the job for what I need it to do. Um, I expect to get much better in the future and uh, my scans will be even better, and yours will too. Uh, this thing is highly recommended by me. It's a lot simpler to operate than I expected it to be. Um, it, it, it becomes intuitive and it's not so much of a, a, a huge learning curve. It's just a matter of being able to have the discipline to be steady with your hand and you know learn what works and what doesn't. There will be a ton of things I can use this Morocco scanner for for this Aurelius build and other projects coming up in the future. Um, this is state-of-the-art stuff and it's affordable. Make sure to click the link below to get yours. To get yours.